YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So I might be wearing all the clothes <laughs> this morning. I have on a sweater with a hood and a hoodie and jeans and lined slippers because y'all, it is getting nigh on to winter here. It is 35 degrees. I just get that. Could you try <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my nosy watch. 35 degrees outside, 62 in the house, but it's supposed to be a sunny day. It's supposed to be a high near 70, 70s for the next couple days, and just in time for the weekend, 50s and rain. So how is it where you are? So I thought today I would do a set down chitty chat video with you because there's been something kind of on my heart. And after doing the video about reinventing yourself and hearing so many of your stories. And again, thank you for sharing those. I realized that there's a lot of us out there that are going to be going through this holiday season dealing with the loss of a loved one. So let's talk a little bit about how you might survive this holiday season in spite of your grief. I hope you'll stay tuned. Before we get into the meat of the discussion today, I want to say, a big welcome to all of our new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. If you're brand new here, my name is Kim. And I also want to say a huge shout out to all you returning and faithful subscribers. We just crossed the 4,800 subscriber mark. And guys, I still would like to hit 5,000 by year end. And I think we can do it, right? So if I present a video that is helpful to you or you know someone that it might help, my suggestion to you is go ahead and hit that share button below the video and then it will pop up with the options that are relative to your device, whether it's texting or emailing, etc., or sharing it on Facebook. It really does help my channel and I appreciate it when you do that. All right, so how to survive the holidays after the loss of a loved one. I'm gonna to try to do this video of my very best without crying, y'all, but let me just share with those of you who are new, who are new, December 4th will mark 13 years since my beloved daddy passed away. And then this year on June 29th, I lost my mom. And I will say that the loss of my mother, while very, sad also resurfaced a lot of my feelings and sadness about losing my dad. My dad was, you know, relatively young and he had such a desire to live. He had metastatic prostate cancer. And so it just has kind of brought up a lot of those same grieving feelings that I had all over again. Um, and now you know, I, I have had experienced, excuse me, the loss of both parents. So I have to tell y'all, I have zero energy or desire <laughs> to celebrate this year. And looking back on, now, granted, my dad passed away right before Christmas, but um, yeah, that year just wasn't Christmas. I mean, we... I just tried to like skip the holidays other than celebrating a little bit with my son. It was a very difficult time. And I don't want to go through kind of the same as what I did 13 years ago uh, because of the loss of my mother. So I think the first step for me, and a lot of this is going to be for me, guys, is I, I need to acknowledge that the first holiday season is going to be difficult. And I think a lot of times our anticipation of the holiday and the change and the differences and the, maybe the loss of tradition, the anticipation of that is worse than the actual day itself. And there's really no right or wrong way to celebrate. So when my dad was living, my parents were in Florida, they would leave the day after Thanksgiving. So we had what we called Thanksmas. So our Thanksgiving and Christmas, we celebrated together. 
and it was really a lot of fun. So we had Thanksgiving food, but Christmas presents and Christmas decor. And I always hosted, well, for many, many years I hosted because they were leaving the next day, right? And since then, Thanksgiving has just kind of been a weird holiday. And my son, who was extremely close to my dad, he's handled it by simply, he works Thanksgiving, we celebrate Christmas, and that's our new normal. And that's actually worked out fairly well. We always included my mother in those celebrations. So, <clears throat> pardon me, that will be a little bit different. So what are some suggestions or tips for grief at the holidays? I think the first thing is set realistic expectations for yourself. Don't think just because the holidays are coming that you're not going to still experience sadness, grieving. Um, go ahead and accept those offers of help or offers to participate in a new tradition. You know, oscillating yourself just makes the grief sharper and more difficult. For some people, I think crowds and the hustle and bustle of Christmas shopping can be too painful. It was a long tradition for me after hosting on Thanksgiving Day to go out on Black Friday and do uh, Christmas shopping for my son, basically. That, that was the most of what I did. And I just, I loved getting up in the middle of the night, going, and I might not buy anything, but I just loved all of that. And that kind of changed for me. So order online, guys, if it's too painful to be out in all of the merriment, and pardon me, merrymakers. <laughs> oh my word, excuse me. Hold on, let me get right, a drink. Number two, I'm going to say, despite the temptation, avoid canceling the holiday season. <laughs> so my initial thought quite honestly was, you know, even with my mom being in a facility, I would go to the Christmas celebrations there. Plus I still had my own and I'm like, I'm just going to cancel it. I'll just get together with my son for Christmas. I think it's okay to avoid what you aren't ready to handle. So at the funeral home, my cousin so graciously <clears throat> said, holidays are at my house going forward, her house, you know. And this is my um, cousin from my aunt who I helped with the estate sale. And while I really appreciate that, and I did go to Thanksgiving there last year, I, do, I don't know if I can do it this year. I just don't know. But I would also say don't isolate yourself. It's okay to have some time for solitude, for grieving, but I think you need to balance it with other activities and not just stay solitary because I think that just enhances grief. Number three, allow yourself to feel your feelings. So whether that's joy, sadness, anger, or just grief, experiencing joy and laughter does not mean that you've forgotten your loved one. Now, y'all, I'm going to tell you a story, a little known story. <laughs> um, you know how sometimes when you're grieving, if you get tickled, if you start to laugh, you cannot stop. That would be me and my sister. <laughs> Thankfully, we didn't really do that at my mom's funeral. But when my grandpa died, my mom's dad, um, he wanted to be buried in Kentucky, where Eastern Kentucky, where we're from and where my family's from. And the cemetery is very, very steep. It's on a steep hill. And he wanted to be buried by his first wife, my grandma. And he was a big man. My grandpa was a very big man. And guys, I can tell you from being a pallbearer for my mom, those caskets are heavy. Most caskets weigh about 200 pounds, if you did not know that. So in the South, they didn't, they are unable to use a hearse to get up the big hill because <laughs> it's too low riding, especially with the casket in there, right? So they had a little Jimmy, like um, SUV, and they had the seats 
either down or out. I don't remember that part. But the casket was sticking out, you know, probably 18 inches. And it was so hot that day. And it had rained. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at this. So when the the jimmy started to go up for the graveside service, um, it wouldn't, it was just spinning. So the driver <laughs> goosed it causing the casket, which was not tied down in the jimmy. They are in a hearse. It caused the casket to come out the back. Well, my sister and I just lost it laughing. And so my mom was very disappointed in our behavior. But here's what I can say. My grandpa would have thought that was a riot, right? And oh, by the way, they ended up hand packing him up to the graveside. They totally abandoned the jimmy idea. But, um, just because you experience moments of joy or new traditions doesn't mean that you've forgotten your loved one. You know, we are a big ball of different emotions that come out at different times, hopefully a little more appropriately than my sister and myself, but um, everyone has their own grief experience. So while I might get tickled about something and, and actually want to laugh and enjoy myself, someone else may think, well, she's not grieving when inside of course yes i am all right y'all sorry i had to let the girl girls out they were getting loud <laughs> i didn't want to wake the neighbors so number four take care of yourself be kind to yourself i'll say this not in a non-judgmental way but y'all don't self-medicate whether it's with medications or alcohol it when you come back to yourself, everything's going to be just the same. So that is not going to help you work through the grieving process at all. What can help is physical exercise, staying busy. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And we're going to do something fun today. <sighs> Journal. I think for me, because I uh, am single, Sometimes I don't have that trusted advisor that I can feel comfortable sharing all of my emotions with. Sometimes writing them down is a way to acknowledge uh, this is really the way I'm feeling. And as I read through what I wrote, that's not super logical and here's what I need to do next. So I do highly recommend journaling. And then finally, undertake care of yourself. Give yourself permission to buy something frivolous or indulgent. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can just be frivolous. Um, that can, or sentimental, that can really be a help in bringing together what was your old traditions and what will become your new traditions. So I've taken advantage of this in a really small way. Uh, I have the 1950s turkey platter what don't I have for my mom? <laughs> Still need to clean that out. Uh, that we use my whole growing up. And, you know, it's a turkey platter. It's about this big. Nothing real special about it. Well, when I received it from my mom, it had a big chip in it. And it's also very crazed. And the finish, I guess you would say, the glaze is very crazed, cracked, stained. And guys, I'm thinking it might not be like super safe to be using that for turkey. So I got thinking about it and I thought, you know, I bet somebody has that, that turkey platter and I've looked for it for years. I did find it on eBay and I have ordered it for myself. Now, of course it hasn't arrived yet, but when it does, I'm sure I'll share it with you. That, even if I just, y'all, I don't like turkey. <laughs> even if I just use it for decor, um, that, I think is going to be really, really neat. And the one that's all cracked and crazed probably needs to go in the dumpster. All right. Number five, create a new tradition or ritual. So some people can be very comforter, comforted by honoring traditions that they've always done in the family, even after the loss of a patriarch or a matriarch. Others will find it unbearable. So I give you the example of my son. He finds Thanksmas or Thanksgiving unbearable. And so his way of handling it is, 
we go big for Christmas and we just, um, he just overlooks Thanksgiving. He works and that way all of his employees can have the day off. And while that's really kind, I didn't think he would continue it for 13 years. He has, and that's what works for him. So I think having a discussion at your first holiday season um, with other family members about what you want to include and what you want to exclude. So some people will be, oh, we've got to do this because we've always done that. And other people will be like, I think we need a whole new set of traditions. So that way no one gets surprised because one of the things to remember guys is you're probably not the only one grieving. So examples of this, who's going to carve the turkey? In my house, no one, because I don't like turkey, but my dad always did it. You know, even though I cook the turkey, he always carved it. Um, you could do a moment of silence or a little holiday toast in memory of your loved one. You can also light candles. Now, y'all, I want to show you this. I haven't been able to bring myself to open it, but the funeral home that we've used for both my mother and my father, um, part of their package is you get a memorative candle or a memorial candle. So this was my beautiful mother. I kind of look like her when I smile. <laughs> I have a similar one for my father. So this year, I am gonna light those candles in memory. Shoot. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so terribly sorry. I thought I could get through this without crying, but obviously I couldn't. All right. Another idea is a commemorative ornament. So one of the things I'm going to be doing in the spring since I expanded my garden is I am going to plant some commemorative things for my parents to have sort of a memory garden. But you could do a memory ornament for your Christmas tree. I think that is a lovely idea. All right, number six, talk to people about how you're feeling. It will help with your support. It will help with your connection. You know, one of the things I found so hard when I initially lost my father, because it was, he was on hospice and it was kind of a, a long drawn out illness. Um, it was very, very emotional. And that was the first parent I had lost. And after the funeral and after the burial, and after all the things were settled and I went back to work, I was like, how can people just go on with their normal lives? Like, don't they know I've lost my father? Like, how can they just forget and just be happy? And what I think what you have to remember is your grief is different than what people who did not know your loved one very well. So don't take offense when they really push you and want you to get back to normal and do the normal things. I think everybody grieves in their own way and you have to do what works for you. But talking about it will help you to connect to people, help them to better understand how you're feeling and it'll make you feel supportive. I would also say explore grief counseling and explore grief support groups. I think the grief support groups for me have just been amazing. Um, I started taking advantage of that when my mom initially started really showing her signs of dementia because you feel like you're all alone in it and hearing other people's stories. And they also have very good suggestions about how they've coped, how they've made their way through. It can be invaluable for sure. Number seven, acknowledge that holidays are part of your milestones in life. So holidays often mark, kind of mark the passage of time. We know once we've had Christmas, New Year's is coming, we're off to a new year. And when those dramatically change, it can really put off the cadence of setting those milestones. So... I think it's important to remember that holidays can really magnify your loss, but you can still create milestones and move through it. 
Again, first year might be very different and you may learn kind of as you go along what works best for you. Number eight, you know, I'm big on planning, right? Have a plan A, what you plan to do, but have a plan B. So if you get into the holiday, you decide, okay, I'm going to host Thanksgiving for the, for the remaining family. And it doesn't seem to be going right. Have an alternate activity planned. So maybe you go around the table and you share the funniest story about your loved one or loved ones. Maybe you watch their favorite movie. Um, maybe you do something totally unrelated to your loved one that will just get everybody, um, enjoying each other's company and set that new milestone for sure. And my final thought, which is number nine, don't ignore your grief. Guys, you don't have to be strong. It's okay to cry. I cry a lot. As I was doing a little bit of research um, into some suggestions for myself, and then I decided to make it into a video. Um, one of the websites said, if you have 500 tears, don't just cry 250. So I thought that was so profound because trying to hold it back, trying not to feel the feelings um, really doesn't help. And it can surface in other emotions like anger or frustration or depression for sure. So feel all those feelings, whether you're sad, whether you're angry, whether you're anxious, whether you're annoyed, <laughs> it's okay to feel the feelings and go ahead and acknowledge your loss. That was a hard thing for me to do to say, <clears throat> both of my parents are gone. That was really hard, but actually acknowledging that, wow, that's a tremendous loss. Wow, that really has changed a lot of things about my life that has helped me kind of work through some of my discouragement and depression and y'all say you can't see it but I feel like I've been a hot mess in 2023 and I am really looking forward to 2024 so y'all know I love fall y'all know I love Halloween but I also will admit that since my dad passed away, I have not hosted Thanksgiving. But no, that's not true. I haven't hosted Thanksgiving in the same way. What we started trying to do was going out to eat. And that just, it just wasn't the same at all. So um, then we just didn't do anything. And especially once my mom's memory issues began to surface and then she moved into the assisted living and then the memory care, I participated in those activities. But with my son not being home, nothing else. But this year I'm gonna make it a little different. So I'm not gonna take down all my Halloween stuff quite yet, but today is October 11th. So we are, 20 days from Halloween. So over the next couple weeks, I will probably start divesting myself, packing up some of my Halloween decorations leaving the fall. And I want to bring in some touches of Thanksgiving. So what am I going to do today? I am going to take a trip, not to the Heart of Ohio Antique Mall, but to the Springfield Antique Center because it's relatively close and I know I can find a lot of goodies there and pick up just a few things that are Thanksgiving themed that I would have used had my parents um, planned to be here this year for Thanksmas. So I hope you will come along with and I hope this video doesn't get too long. Alrighty, stay tuned. Well, we are not at the antique uh, center. You know, it's a woman's prerogative to change your mind, right? So I decided, you know, if I'm going to start my own traditions, maybe I need to go to like a real store. Now, y'all know I love my thrift store, my vintage store, um, but there is a very large Goodwill in Springfield, Ohio. So that's where I am. I'm not going to take you along inside the store. It's pretty crowded, but I will be sharing the finds that I got to start my new Thanksgiving. I started to say Halloween. Thanksgiving traditions. So I hope you'll stay tuned. All right, y'all. Finished up at the Goodwill. I have to say it was more Halloween than anything else. 
funny enough, ran into my next door neighbor and her mom. So hello, Grace. Hello, Carrie. And uh, got some orders for some Bath and Body products. So I'm going to get busy on that. But I'm actually going to head over to the Ohio Valley Thrift is what it's called. They could remember. I couldn't. They're out thrifting too. So I'm going to try that next. We'll see what we can find. So I will share what, everything I get right at the end. I hope I can film a little bit in this thrift store because it's really unique. Try to talk over the music. So this is a huge store. This is kind of new. They have appliances, um, uh, marked down, you know, used appliances, which might be an option for people. Some furniture, tons and tons of clothes. And then the home goods are more in the back. Again, trying to talk over the music here. So what they have is a mixture of used items, brand new items um it's really very interesting this is a, a vintage bird statue and then you might see something you know brand new with it so and they do organize in color waves and they have a lot of buyout merchandise all too. right y'all you ready to see what thanksgiving things i was able to find so this haul is from ohio thrift We've always called it Ohio Valley Thrift, but I think it is technically Ohio Thrift in Springfield. So I can share with you the prices on things. So the first thing I got is Old English Countryside Made in England by the Johnson Brothers. It's a serving bowl. And the reason that I chose this, not only is it fall themed, I actually have, they're my son's, but everything my son owns might still be in this house. I have dishes that will match this sort of, that are the brown and cream. So I thought this might be really nice for Thanksgiving. And because I love owls, this little owl candle holder. Oh, this was the most expensive thing at $5.99. Now this was a whopping 99 cents, but owls are very fallish, very Thanksgiving. I thought it was super cute. And then a gal named Patty in 1981 painted this little fall picture. I think it's really neat. Um, it's just on a wood plaque and I thought, well, that, that's fallish, Thanksgiving-ish, you know, prior to Christmas. For my bath cookies that we made in an earlier video, I got these tree bags for 99 cents and they include the twist ties and there's 20 bags in here. I thought that was a good deal. And then, <laughs> Y'all ready for a blast from the past? How many of you remember these? So these are, kind of, they're plastic, and they're plastic on the inside. They're in surprisingly good shape. I haven't washed them yet, but they have like the burlap, and they were 99 cents each. I got the orange, the avocado, the brown, and the gold. I thought these would be perfect for pie and ice cream at the holidays and just for setting the table. I thought they were super cute. And again, I remember us having these when I was a kid. So let me reposition here. I'll show you what I found at the Goodwill, which will take like two shakes. So I actually started at the Goodwill. That's where I ran into my neighbors. And one of the first things I found was this cute little welcome. It's just a little welcome sign. It's good for the tiered tray look, has a turkey on it. That was a whopping 99 cents. And I don't know if you all have been out kind of mainstream shopping. There's like nothing Thanksgiving, hardly at all. I think we've gotten to the point where we go straight from Halloween into Christmas. And this kind of set the tone for the day. It actually has the little holder for it. It is a plate that says abundance and it has a fall leaf and I just thought it was so neat and I paid $3.99 so with tax $5.34 at the Goodwill. So sometimes it's not about how much money you spend. It's really about finding things that that bring you joy. I mean call it retail therapy, call it call it whatever you like. Now I did pick up, I went on over to Hobby Lobby because they do have all their fall on sale half price. So I did pick up a couple things there. Um, not half price, 40% off. So let me 
reload up here, guys. So I spent a little bit more at the Hobby Lobby. <laughs> but I got some cool things. So the first thing I picked up are these Robert Stanley um, just natural woven placemats. These would be a great really any time of the year, but I thought, wow, for fall, and especially for Thanksgiving, I thought they were quite lovely. And then they had, oh, these were, um, where's my, where's my, yeah. Okay, it's over here, hold on. <laughs> Six dollars fifty nine cents, and then a spatula and a whisk that um, is for show. <laughs> I do use these some guys, but I just thought they were so fallish, so cute. Eight ninety nine less. The discount made them five thirty nine, and they're good quality. This was my splurge. And y'all, somewhere I've gotten glitter all over me. Is it from you? <laughs> I don't know. So I thought this turkey was so neat. And um, let's see, he was regularly $17.99. And I got him for $10.79. So this I thought would be, you know, the new normal, something I could pass on to my son. It's lovely. I do have a beautiful ceramic one from my friends Peggy and Norm over at Crazy for Retro that will go on the table. Um, I always have to have a craft. So this is a turkey kit and it makes 12 turkeys. It was $4.49. I'm going to make a garland out of it. I thought it was so stinking cute. So with the discount, it was $2.69. I did get um, 50 high quality fall party napkins, but it, they actually save you things. So whatever I don't use this year, I can use next year. And these were 359, hang on. Sorry about that jaw phone call. So this was, I think, super cool. So it is a turkey drawing. I always try to hang like um, seasonal things in my entryway. He will be just perfect, or maybe he'll go in the uh, powder room downstairs or the restroom downstairs. It looks like a pencil drawing, and with the discount, this was $10.19. And then my final purchase was this thankful banner with the leaves. I thought this was lovely for my island, and with the discount, this was $6.59, so I thought that, wait, I might be telling you wrong. Hold on, $7.79, but very well made and can be used year after year. So I think I cornered, cornered the market on fall. I've been kind of reflecting today on what I might want to do for Thanksgiving and um, stay tuned for that. But I do want to really reflect on the abundance and the gratitude I have for the way life is. And I think sometimes when you're really grieving, thinking about what's going right, not what wrong, can really be helpful. So I hope today's video has been a big help to you. If you would do me a favor, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave me a comment below. Are you having trouble finding things for Thanksgiving? Or what's your traditional go-to decor for Thanksgiving? I would love some ideas from you all. All right, guys, I will see you a bit later. Let's see, this week, I have to think about when this is going to go up. Today's the 11th, so in less than a week it'll be up. But at any rate, I hope you are healthy, well, and blessed, and I will see you very soon. Take care.